Namaste. Welcome to the next session of our course on practical machine learning. In this session, we will go through uh, some of the machine learning concepts visually so that it is easier for you to understand or get intuition for these concepts. We will use a neural network playground as a tool to visualize machine learning algorithms. So, we have a, a, a tool called neural network playground with a very interesting tagline uh, tinker with neural network right here in browser do not worry you cannot break anything. So, uh, let us let us explore bravely without worrying about things getting getting broken up. So, before we begin uh, let, let me uh, tell you a few things about this particular tool since uh, most of you are new to this. So, uh, in, the, in the previous session we look at uh, we talked about componentized view of machine learning model where we said that we need uh, training data we uh, set up the model uh, we train the model and we evaluate the model performance. In training the model we, uh, we define the loss function and uh, we also define what kind of uh, what kind of algorithm will be used. Uh, so, if you are using let us say gradient descent or uh, any of its variant, we have to set up things like learning rate um, and we also have to sometimes set up uh, use regularization in order to control the model complexity. So, we studied all these things in, in, in the previous sessions. Let us try to uh, use those things in practice and see uh, how they uh, affect the training of our machine learning models. So, here on your uh, on your left you see a pane where we can define different kind of data. So, you can think of these as simulated data uh, data sets. So, the one that is highlighted here is the data which has got clear linear separation between two classes. So, we have a positive class which is denoted by blue color and negative class denoted by the orange color. Uh, so, you uh, Please note that orange color in the playground is used for negative values whereas positive uh, whereas the blue color is used for the positive values. So, you can so this is about data set. So, we have four different data set one which is linearly separable one which is uh, not linearly separable or, or rather the, the remaining three data sets are not linearly separable, but have uh, varying degree degrees of complexities. And we will see uh, how uh, to make use of techniques like feature crosses to uh, fit a model over here. We will we'll be using this neural network playground later with neural networks where uh, you will see how some of the things that we construct by hand uh, in, in traditional machine learning algorithm uh, is, is kind of taken away by use of neural network. So, we can uh, choose the data set uh, here in this pane, we can specify what is the ratio of training and test. Uh, so, remember uh, we talked about training test split and you can specify in what, what percentage you want to split training and test data. Uh, so, we have a slider here that defines how much data is used for training and how much data is used for testing. So, here uh, you know we are going to use uh, we are going to use let us say 70 percent data for training and 30 percent data for testing. Uh, then we can also add noise to this data set. So, uh, currently in, in its current form on the screen uh, you can see that this data does not have any noise it has got 0 noise. As you add more and more noise you will see that the points will uh, so the classes get polluted with point from the other class. So, this is like 45 percent noise in 50 percent noise you will see that there are some of these uh, negative points uh, that are present among positive class and vice versa. So, noise is uh, 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 so, so with noise we can actually simulate the real life data set uh, which generally contain uh, some noisy labels. And finally, uh, since uh, this neural network playground uses mini batch gradient descent 
uh, we also get to see set the batch size. So let uh, so you can you can also expand by setting the batch size let us set it to 16 uh, then you can simply press the generate button that will generate the data for us. Then uh, you know uh, here so each of these data point has two feature which is x1 and x2 and uh, you know uh, this is the part where we build our model. Uh, so currently we are using a logistic regression model and the logistic regression model is set up by having uh, one output layer. Uh, which has got sigmoid activation. So, this will be uh, clear to you once we get into neural network. We had briefly seen neural network. So, you kind of know what is activation uh, and what is output layer. So, here we use one output layer and uh, we use sigmoid activation over there. We, uh, we can also specify a bunch of other parameters like learning rate, regularization. Right now, we are not using any regularization, but you can use either L1 or L2 as regularization. You can also uh, you know uh, fix up the rate of regularization which was denoted by parameter lambda as we saw in the previous class and we can uh, define the problem type here we are defining classification as a problem type. So, you can think of uh, this particular part uh, defining the hyperparameters uh, of our model. And this is where you visualize uh, you know uh, the the prediction how the model is uh, what kind of prediction it is giving and this particular part you will you will see learning curves appearing when we start training and you will be able to see test loss and the training loss. And uh, this is the button where uh, this is the part where we control or where we so if you uh, press the play button uh, the model start training you can see that see this you can stop the training you can uh, revert to the initial situation and you can use this particular button to, to see what happens how model trains step wise. So, you can see what happens in the first step, second step and so on. Uh, so, let us try to uh, solve this problem uh, with the setting where we use 70 percent data for training and uh, 30 percent data for testing. Uh, we have a data set uh, without any noise and we are using batch size of 60 and let us see uh, we are using learning rate of 0.3. So, so the what we can explore is we can see uh, how learning rate affects uh, the loss or, or the convergence right. We, we saw that learning rate affects the convergence. If you have two uh, small learning rate it takes longer to reach to the, uh, to the minima. And if you use very high learning rate, there is a possibility that you will never converge because you might be oscillating across uh, minimas and uh, you will never reach the convergence. So, we will have to uh, you know um, find a sweet spot between two extremes. We do not want to have too low running learning rate or not too high learning rate, but we want to have sufficient large learning rate so that we can safely train our model in an efficient manner. By safety, I mean it does not um, does not do oscillations or anything like that. We will also uh, you know um, try with different regularization along with regularization rates. So, uh, let us let us see what happens. So, so what you see is so we have done the we, we have you know reset everything and now what you see is uh, you know the model is initialized with some weights. So, there is a weight of 0.46 on x1 and is a weight of there is a negative weight uh, on, on w2 on, on x2 this is w2 and this is uh, w1 and you can see that uh, the, the width of the line defines the strength of the weight. So, you can see that uh, as things appear right now x1 seems to be a stronger predictor over x2. x2 seems to be weak predictor because the line is quite faint and uh, it, it, it has got uh, and, and yeah so and, and the color of the line tells you the uh, the sign of the weight. So, this color is slightly uh, orangish so this this will have negative uh, negative this the weight will be negative and this will weight will be positive. Okay, let us start stepping through uh, the, the model you can see that 
the error is reducing gradually on trading loss and test loss. Now it has slowed down. You can see that trading loss is moving to, towards 0 as we go through more epochs. So you can see that after 27 epochs, a trading loss is 0 0.001 and test loss is 0 0.002. Now, uh, so we achieved this state after 24 epochs. If you go, if you reduce your learning rate, let us reset and see what happens. So, we have, uh, so now you can see that the points are, uh, you know, the weights are randomly initialized. Now, there is a high weight on x2 and low weight on x1. So, this is the initial stage. Let us start stepping through. You can see that it is, it is kind of learning very slowly. If you play this further, you can see that it takes far longer, it has already taken more than 500 iteration, 500 epochs, not even near to any of the numbers that we got from our first experiment. So you can see that it is training very slowly. Let us go to the other extreme. Let us use the learning rate of 10 which is very high and you can see that in, in, in one epoch, in one epoch we managed to get to the 0 loss. If you reduce it to 1, you can see that in pretty much one epoch we are able to achieve very low training and test loss can see that when we use 0.1, in first 7 epochs we reach very close to uh, 0 loss. So now uh, let us try to increase the noise level and see how algorithm responds to this. Now we got loss which is much higher than what we were getting previously and it is obvious because we have uh, some of the points that are misclassified and you can also check the weights here on each one of them. If we increase the learning rate, okay, we are able to train faster. Okay, so, we are not able to get a 0 error rate. So, what we can do is we can increase the complexity of the model and try to learn some more complex representations so that our uh, losses are reduced. So, one way of increasing the complexity is by raising the polynomial degree of the original input features. So, here what we will do is we will raise the power of x1 and x2 to 2 and also add an interaction term and see how uh, it affects the performance. So, you can simply click on, uh, on this to add uh, the second the, the, the square of x1, we can add, we can click on this to get a square of x2 and uh, we can uh, click on this to get interaction term. And now, let us try to train again, you see now when I used learning rate of 10, you can see that there are oscillations. Let us play it back and see how the oscillation plays out. You can see that it is oscillating. So, of course, this is a very high learning rate. We will uh, we'll bring it down to 0.3 and see what happens. So, now you can observe that uh, the, so in the initial 2 experiment, we had a boundary which was linear. But now you can see that we have boundary which is non-linear, we have a boundary which is slightly curved and this kind of complex boundary we will, we were able to add because we added these interaction features. And you will be curious to know what are these colors here. So, you can see that if I just use x1 as a predictor, this is how I can separate the points. If I use x2, this is the separation I get, if I use x1 square it only operates on that particular highlighted part, x2 I get this separation, 
x1 x2 I get this kind of separation. So you are essentially getting separations for x1 square this is the separator between for x2 this is the separator for x1 x2 uh, the separator is and the overall separator is uh, you know linear combination of all these uh, individual separators and you can see uh, different weights here. So let us try to train even more slowly and see what happens. Yeah, we seem to have reached or I mean we are not able to get it below that. So let us add a couple of more terms uh, which are signs of the original features and we will try to you can see that now we have boundary which is even more interesting uh, even more complex than the previous ones. So uh, at this point you can pause the video and try to play with uh, learning rate and regularization to see uh, whether you can get a better model uh, which is uh, which, we, which will not overfit on the test data. So let us try to add regularization and see the effect of regularization. We will start with L2 regularization. Uh, before doing that let us once run the whole thing and note down the weights. So you can see that x1 and x2 are strong positive weights and then there is some weight on sin x and then all other uh, elements do not have uh, that high weights because they are quite faint you can make it out based on their uh, width. So let us say uh, we use L2 regularization with regularization coefficient of 0.1 uh, let us see what happens now. You can so probably learning rate is a bit higher. Yeah, you can you can see more complex boundary getting learned, and it's very interesting to see that it is it is using now small weights everywhere else except for these two features. If we use L1 regularization here, let's see what happens. If I use L1 regularization, L1 regularization has tendency to, uh, to put 0 weight to the features that are not important. And you can see that uh, all these features um, got 0 weight. So only features that are important here is x1 and x2. So, so you can see that L1 regularization can also be used for feature selection uh, for getting the features which are probably more important. Uh, in the classification task and indeed L1 regularization is used uh, for modern feature selection. One of the way in which you can build machine learning models is take your features if you have enough computation power you can raise it to uh, some degree of polynomial and uh, you know through L1 regularization with sufficient regularization rate you will be able to uh, get uh, feature selection. Uh, in, in, the, in the process of training. So the training will happen and you, uh, you know most important features will get picked up. Later we will see that we do not have to construct the, uh, the feature crosses by hand and neural network takes care of that automatically. So let us try to uh, go to another data set and uh, try to see so here unlike our previous data set, this data set uh, is non-linearly separable. So uh, even if you have a clean data uh, without any noise, we cannot just use uh, the, the original features x1 and x2 because they simply do not have capacity to learn uh, the complex boundary which is circle in this case separating both the classes. So what we will do is we will write away. Uh, we will actually uh, train it once and see where we reach. You can see that the training error is 0.49. Uh, Let us add the interaction features and see where we reach. And now let us retrain it again. You can see that within, so we are getting very low training and test error. So we are getting uh, almost a perfect classifier which is a circle uh, which is separating two classes. 
So, we can stop it and uh, let us try to use L1 regularization here with a 0.1 regularization rate and see what happens if we retrain this. So, you can see that we have again achieved a fairly low training and test error and now you can see that only features that are important are the squared features which is quite obvious because it is a circular decision boundary. So, squared features uh, obviously will have uh, larger say. So, uh, yeah, so you, you can clearly see that uh, you know here we, we did feature process raised it to degree 2 polynomial and we simply applied L1 regularization uh, which, which gave us these two features. Let us try to apply L2 regularization and see what happens. Now, L2 regularization also got us uh, fairly similar training and test error, but you can see that uh, L2 regularization does not assign 0 weights to the features, instead it assigns weights which are very small. So, this is one of the uh, differences that you can note um, that you can observe in L1 and L2. So, you can, uh, so, so as an exercise what you should do is you should pause the video and try out bunch of different combinations. Uh, I would suggest not to change the activation type here because we are solving this as a classification problem, sigmoid is the right activation type, but I would suggest you, uh, I would strongly encourage you to um, change the learning rate, uh, regularization and regularization rate, uh, try to add more noise in the data and see whether you can uh, fit the model and uh, how the model looks like after, after getting uh, you know fairly low training and test error. So, let us try on the final data set which is XOR data. Uh, this is even more interesting data set you can see that uh, the, the classes are in a XOR situation. So, let us uh, hope with a simple linear classifier. So, we add uh, interaction features or the second order polynomial features and we can do the training and see what happens. So, quickly uh, it went down to reasonably low error and we can see that uh, you know we have a complex decision boundary and the most important feature is the interaction feature that helps us predict this particular thing. All other features have very small weights around 0. So, now if you apply, if you do not apply any regularization. Till we see that this is the most dominating feature. If you use L1 regularization, you can see that all the features have been driven to weight of 0. Only one feature which is the most important feature which is the interaction feature have got a strong positive weight and, and we are able to separate the two classes. So, this was a nice visual way of uh, intuitively learning how machine learning algorithms perform in under different data sets and uh, different noise added to the data set. So, in this, uh, in this session we looked at linearly separable data set, uh, non-linearly separable data set and XOR data set and applied classification technique on them uh, to classify points into, uh, into the correct classes. We also studied how uh, we can use uh, the interaction features and uh, L1 and L2 regularization uh, in, in the context to uh, you know to control the model complexity. Hope you enjoyed learning uh, this session with us. This brings us to an end of machine learning refresher using uh, neural network playground. In the, in the upcoming session we are going to uh, do a similar refresher for deep neural network. We will start with the basic primer on uh, deep neural network. Uh, we will follow uh, that up with some mathematical foundations of deep learning through coding and we will also visualize some of these, uh, some of the concepts of neural network and their application to different data set to neural network playground. Uh, till then, uh, goodbye, dhanyavad.